Among the knight's children, a dreadlord will rise. In an age of strife, when dragons return to the realm of men, darkness will mingle with light, and the night and day will be as one. What's going on ladies and gentlemen, my name is Michael and welcome to Fudge Muppet. Today we're going to be talking about the sun. I'm sure you're all having flashbacks to the fierce debates about analysing the position of the sun in the Elder Scrolls 6 trailer to figure out the setting of the game. In fact, if you're feeling risky, I challenge you to type in Elder Scrolls 6 Battle Royale into YouTube and click the first thing that pops up. Anyways, what we're talking about here is the potential widespread decimation of the Tamrielic population, caused by Harkin succeeding in his plan of corrupting Oriel's bow with Serana's blood, using it to permanently block out the sun itself. We could have taken the angle that asks what would happen if the dragonborn joined the vampires and helped Harkin fulfill the prophecy, but we decided to keep it simpler, as the results on Tamriel would play out quite the same. Plus, the Dovahkin can be theorized to have all kinds of levels of power, capable of defeating all kinds of foes and forces, so things become less clear and even more theoretical. Keeping the scope to Harkin, things are going to be spec speculative enough, and I want to heavily stress that this is a super subjective video, and I'd love to hear your theories about this situation in the comments below. I know I can think of plenty of creative ways that Harkin could be stopped and the world saved. However, we're going to be containing our various thoughts on this theory with three groundwork assumptions, the first of which is that there's no grand intervention or external save the day plot device, such as some special Thalmor mage who might have brought back the moons when they mysteriously disappeared in the past, or the Sigic Order. The reason we're going with this idea is because while yes, it is possible for the world to be saved by the Dragonborn, or a group like the Sigic Order, it's impossible to predict with any kind of certainty, and it makes most theories about dangerous situations a bit redundant, as you could always just say, well, what if XYZ used unbeatable mystery magic to instantly solve the problem, more or less patching up just about any theory about any threat. We also thought it's wise to touch on a point regarding the sun when it comes to Elder Scrolls lore. So in the Elder Scrolls universe, the sun is basically a big hole created by Magnus as he fled Mundus. For those who don't know, Magnus is known as the god of magic, and was one of the original spirits that existed during the creation of the mortal plane, which is known as Mundus. When Magnus realized that he would have to sacrifice too much of his power to create it, he fled, creating a tear in Mundus, and this tear, or big hole, is actually the sun. It allows energy from Aetherius to leak through to the mortal plane, giving the races of Tamriel access to Magicka. Many other original spirits, who would become known as the Magna Gi, followed Magnus, creating more tears which leak Magicka, appearing in the sky as stars. Anyways, the reason I explain this piece of lore is so we're all on the same page when I say that the second assumption is that there is still enough Magicka available for use. Whether that's via the stars, or if it still somehow came through the hole where the sun is still positioned, even though the light itself does doesn't come through. Simply put, blocking out the sun doesn't affect Magicka in-game. The third assumption is that Harkin is successful in making his way through the necessary quests the Dragonborn is supposed to do, including capturing Serana, and then killing Vytha in the Forgotten Vale, or even teaming up with him to get access to the Bow of Oriel, and then full-on sacrificing Serana to corrupt it, allowing him to becloud the sun for eternity. Now let's dive into the prophecy itself, known as the Tyranny of the Sun. The Tyranny of the Sun prophecy isn't just about getting some blood-cursed elven arrows and using them to blur out the sun whenever it's convenient. No, that's for the Dragonborn who doesn't want to kill Serana. The actual prophecy would involve the complete sacrifice of Serana to block out the sun permanently. The prophecy was devised by Archcurate Vytha, a snow elf turned vampire, who once served Oriel as the Archcurate within the Chantry of Oriel. Sadly for him, he was turned into a vampire by one of the initiates of the Chantry, and he blames Oriel for this affliction, claiming that by not being protected by the deity he worshipped that he was betrayed. It's hard to know the truth, but unless Vytha was turned vampire instantly in the same way Harkin can turn you, he should have been healed by his constant praying to any shrines in the Chantry, so maybe Oriel did betray him for some reason, for some wrongdoing, to test him, or Oriel was just out of the office. Who knows? All we know for sure is that Vytha felt wronged enough to create a prophecy which would lay dormant for thousands of years, a prophecy known as the Tyranny of the Sun, which when fulfilled would weaken Oriel's power and influence over no 
turn by blocking out much of the connection between Mundus and Aetherius. To fulfill this prophecy, one requires the sacrifice of a daughter of Cold Harbor and the bow of Oriel. Vithus sits waiting in Oriel's chapel, seated on a throne where he has been waiting all this time for someone to bring the final component, a daughter of Cold Harbor, to him. In our theory, after tracking down Serana and Valerica and getting the scrolls, Harkin may come and kill Vitha as a means to eliminate a powerful threat, as Harkin wants all the power for himself. Or alternatively, it might end up easier for him than it was for the Dragonborn, with Vitha willingly giving him the bow as they both have the same goal, to fulfill the prophecy and shroud Tamriel in darkness. So with or without the help from a vampiric snow elf, Harkin finds a way to the bow, sacrifices his own daughter, corrupting it with her blood, and uses the bow with a blood-cursed arrow to blind the eye of the dragon, blocking out the sun. With Tamriel plunged into darkness, what happens next? Would vampires roam unhindered and take over Tamriel? Would Harkin become the leader of a new vampire world? Well, many people might be inclined to agree with Serana's mother, Valerica, and her reason for being against Harkin's plot. Lot. After all, it is she who decided to hide Serana away from Harkin, deep within Dim Hollow Crypt with an Elder Scroll, and escape to the Soul Can herself with another Elder Scroll. Valerica believed that the vampires should remain in the shadows, operating with a low profile, and that blocking out the sun would draw too much attention to them, ultimately leading to their extinction. On the surface, her concerns seem reasonable, but after more consideration, I'm not so sure that she should be so worried. And I'm definitely not convinced by the idea that the fact Actions on Tamriel would suddenly team up to defeat the vampires in some kind of mortals versus vampires war. So the first and main reason I don't think the vampires are super likely to lose to the rest of Tamriel is that the vampires don't have to just suddenly attack all the cities and launch some sort of all-out assault. To these immortal beings, that would be a ridiculous, laughable idea. They'd be wise enough to realize that just because the sun has disappeared and they don't have to fear weaknesses from sun damage doesn't mean that they can suddenly take on all the forces of Tamriel in front on combat. I mean, they don't even have structured armies or tacticians, which is all the more reason to believe they'd be smart and bide their time. And ultimately, that's how they'd win, by letting the lack of sunlight do damage and cause instability. It's not like they'd all just hide in Volkahar Castle either and try to pull off some kind of ridiculous last stand against entire Tamrielic armies. They would be low profile, hiding out in small groups in extremely remote places. But that also assumes that killing the Vampires solves the problem and undoes the prophecy, but it kind of doesn't. And to the citizens of Tamriel, they'd just be randomly confronted by this big dark red version of the sun and blocked sunlight. Some bodies of water may be turned blood red, and gargoyles and death hounds would be spotted outdoors sometimes. Perhaps these unnatural beasts would serve as a clue, but generally speaking, it's not easy to know who exactly caused the situation. And even if someone figured it out, Harkin did sacrifice a daughter of Cold Harbor to corrupt Oriel's bow and permanently block out the sun, so without any kind of crazy sigic esque save-the-day plot magic, there's not a lot that can be done. It's also worth noting that it's not just the Volkahar clan that benefit from no sunlight, it's also every other vampire clan on Tamriel, every bloodline, every coven of various levels of power from every province. They could all wreak havoc with guerrilla hit-and-run tactics, turning stragglers on the roads into vampires, growing their numbers, or they could just chill out and wait for the lack of sunlight to kill crops, depleting food sources, and causing widespread panic, infighting, and death over a long period of time. I think the most realistic thing is that the vampire clans across Tamriel act in an unplanned individual way and just do what they want. Some would take advantage and start using hit-and-run tactics, attacking towns, and others, perhaps Clan Volkahar, might be more inclined to to hide. For example, let's just say Harkin thinks that Oriel's bow could be taken by an adversary and used to return the sun to normal. He'd just go into hiding with it, and vampires are very, very good at hiding, especially during the night with the magical prowess to turn invisible, paralyze foes, fly across bodies of water, or just turn into bats and vanish. He could just go into some deep middle of nowhere place, never to be found, and even if he was somehow found, all he'd have to do is run away using his powers and hide somewhere new, and all this time, the lack of sunlight is taking its toll. That's assuming he can't just destroy the bow straight away, preventing any theoretical reversing of the sun, or he can't just tie a heavy weight to it, fly out to the middle of the ocean under the cover of night and drop the thing in the middle of the ocean. But if the prophecy is to be believed, the sun should be permanently blocked anyway. I'll talk in more detail about the lack of sunlight and what that causes later on, but for now, let's talk briefly about the idea 
idea that the forces of Tamriel might even end up teaming up to hunt down vampires. So under the assumption that the factions in power actually know who is to blame, which they probably wouldn't, and think they can do something about it, and forgetting for a moment that it might not be reversible, and if it was, the vampires could just splinter off and hide in places, what would happen? Well, I don't necessarily think that alliances couldn't be formed, but I don't think it's as easy as people might think. Leaders might recognize this constant nighttime as an unfortunate arcane event, but they may think it could come to pass. If they knew it would be permanent, they might be hastier in taking action, but how would they know? But okay, let's assume they're probably smart enough to realize acting fast is wise. What could happen? Well, there's not a lot of direction. The Stormcloaks and Imperials of Skyrim could call a truce until the problem is solved, but really, then what? Let's just say, best case scenario, the Old Miri Dominion forces, the Empire, the Stormcloaks, and even the Red Guards, Dunma, and Argonians all cooperate together, all of which, by the way, is so unlikely it isn't funny, what can they do? They could form squads of vampire hunters and join up with Dawnguard forces, but where would they search? Are they going to have time to search every dungeon and crypt in all of Tamriel in search of evil vampires? It's very resource intensive, and by the time it's all coordinated and decided upon, the lack of sunlight would already be causing widespread destabilization. And again, even if they killed many vampires, it would be near impossible to kill each and every one before the lack of sunlight has ravaged the land. And even if you killed every vampire in existence, you're still stuck in this world with a blocked sun. Sounds like it's better to join the vampires so you can actually survive in this new dark world. Tamriel as we know it is pretty screwed in this scenario, and that's even assuming cooperation between factions is super quick and effective. Think about it. The armies of Hammerfell who fought tooth and nail to fend off the Dominion aren't going to want to suddenly start working with them, and there would likely be a lot of mistrust, with both sides anticipating potential betrayal during any temporary alliance. Also, you have to consider that people may blame others. For instance, the Nords blaming the Thalmor for blotting out the sun. After all, they supposedly had the ability to return the moon, so why not blot out the sun? A kind of alien invasion, like the Oblivion Crisis, really, where the enemy is more visible would have a higher chance of quick alliances being formed, but with a vampire threat which is spread and hidden, you just have a situation where it's constantly nighttime and the problems from that just lead to higher tensions and maybe you can make some allied hunting groups, but there's no kind of clear-cut war to sign up for and fight in. Functionally speaking, Tamriel is exactly the same. The vampires aren't necessarily attacking, it's just night all the time, but then it becomes freezing cold and food sources are depleting with animals dying off as a result. Also consider that other factions might prefer to use this as an advantage too, and not want to team up. For example, the Thalmor might have better food preservation methods using magic, using stagnant balls of light, like the alteration spell except sun magic based, to cultivate crops. This might be done by some mages in Empire territory too, but it could be much rarer so the populations in Empire controlled land suffer faster, with the Old Mary using the whole situation as leverage to turn offensive, gain territory, and take control. This is just one of many examples of how leverage and power might be sought before cooperation is. Furthermore, as I implied earlier, being a vampire would be preferable for many people, so there would definitely be notable cases of voluntary conversion. Think about it. There's two main downsides to being a vampire. The first is that the sun makes you weak during the day, and the second is that you can't really live in mortal society unless you have a way to regularly feed to keep your vampire appearance and thirst for blood at bay. But in a world that is doomed to have no more rays of sun causing vampire problems, the drawbacks for being a vampire start fading. Being a mortal is already tempting enough, but being a mortal in a world where there are no longer any physical drawbacks sounds pretty sweet. And then if things get very vampire dominant and you run out of life sources to feed on, well, then it's perfectly acceptable to live in a society as a vampire as almost everyone else would be a vampire too. Without being a vampire and without some kind of sustaining magic, your chances of living for a long time are very slim. That reminds me of another concept that one might think of, that vampires ultimately would be screwed because without sun the plants would die, then the animals would die, and then there wouldn't be enough food for people, and vampires wouldn't have enough sources of live blood to sustain themselves with. But this notion forgets that vampires in the Elder Scrolls universe don't necessarily have to feed. Elder Scrolls lore can get quite muddled, so I understand why there might be confusion surrounding this idea. There are examples of vampires in certain locations who have gone insane from not feeding or couldn't heal any wounds no matter how
how much they rested without sucking blood. However, from actual gameplay and other lore sources, we know not all vampires have to feed. Serana wasn't on an IV blood drip while she was hidden away for thousands of years to stop her dying from starvation. She didn't die or go crazy. Harkin also mentions to the player that he keeps a stable of thralls in the castle should you need to feed like the base of vampires to stave off the sun. One might assume that it's just his bloodline that doesn't need to feed, but even in Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion during Azura's quest, you were sent to kill or free five of her followers who fought and destroyed a vampire many years ago. They contracted the disease themselves, and knowing they would ravage the world, they decided to lock themselves in gutted mine. They're still alive and ready to fight you when you find them. Furthermore, besides gaining worse effects from the sun and being more susceptible to fire damage, vampires tend to get stronger in a variety of ways when they don't feed, and actually progress in stages of vampirism. If vampires don't feed, they might look more vampiric and they may have an urge for blood that is never filled, driving some of them crazy, but they still live forever and actually get enhanced vampire powers. I think it would be safe to say that it would be survival of the fittest. If some vampire bloodlines or specific individuals were weak or needed blood to survive, they might die when there's scarce sources of blood, but those who don't need it would prosper and propagate their bloodlines, eventually becoming the main vampire bloodlines on Tamriel. Something else worth considering is how a world with no sunlight would affect the Daedra and Aedra. If there's no sunlight and the plants start dying and then animals who eat plants, aka livestock, start dying, and there's not enough sources of food, then obviously mortals start dying too, eventually. Well, as you might know, the amount of worship a deity receives actually affects their power and influence on Nern, and many worshippers would start dying. This would further weaken the power of many deities. However, some mortals who are turned into vampires may choose to continue worshipping the same certain Aedra or Daedra they already did in mortal form. The only problem is that this worship might not be compatible anymore. For example, can you imagine how upset RK would be with a world where the undead are prospering more than Ever. I'm not sure he'd benefit from or even let a vampire worship him. Furthermore, RK is associated with cycles such as seasons and birth and death. These cycles are obviously interfered with in a world with a blocked sun and undead everywhere who live forever and keep spreading their condition. Or what could happen to Kinnereth? Her domain is very nature-based and with nature itself decaying and dying, she's not going to merely have less power from less worshippers, but also fewer natural things to exert influence upon pond in general. Or how about Daedra like Nocturnal? Nocturnal's sphere is night and darkness. Perhaps she would be happy with a world covered in shadow, but she seems to enjoy interacting with mortals and the world as it is. It's hard to say what would happen. Personally, I think if the sun was permanently blocked, the Aedra would suffer the most, and many of the Daedra would carry on, interacting with societies of vampires as they did with mortals. Remember, it's not only the mortality that Daedra enjoy toying with, but also the the general personalities of men and mer. Surely Clavicus Vile can still take advantage of a vampire's greed, and so on. More importantly, there's a possibility that Molag Bao becomes extremely powerful. The full extent of how many mortal souls go to Cold Harbor when they become undead and turn into a vampire isn't known, but vampirism is Molag Bao's affliction, so it makes sense that if vampires forfeit their souls when the condition fully takes hold, then he's the one as a lord of domination who would be collecting them. Them. Anyways, I'd love to hear what you think about the changing strength and weakness of Daedra and Aedra in a world with no sun, where vampires eventually take over. Now let's dive into how no sunlight would affect Tamriel and how mortals would try to survive. We can't exactly know how differently Nern would work compared to our planet Earth, but we can use what scientists think about Earth to draw at least basic conclusions about Nern. So while the science of the Elder Scrolls universe and our universe isn't an exact match, we're going to assume that plants, trees, and so on, convert sunlight into energy to thrive on, just like our flora does here on Earth. Then of course you have wild animals who feed on these plants, and then other animals which feed on animals, and of course the ten playable races who feed on various plants and animals themselves. It's a pretty classic food chain, and if you block out the sun, it wouldn't be long before nature starts to decay and ultimately perish. Scientists here on Earth predict that if you just turn off the sun, our planet doesn't become instantly cold. However, it's estimated that after about a week, the average surface temperature would fall to around 32 Fahrenheit. That's zero Celsius for those wondering. Within a year, it is said to drop to around minus 150 Fahrenheit.
height, which is minus 101 Celsius, and the oceans would freeze over also. Even if a blocked out sun in the Elder Scrolls universe wasn't severe enough for Tamriel to freeze over, I think it's safe to say that something similar could happen on Nern. Assuming it's not as bad in Tamriel, things would still become cold enough to make life for many animals, plants, and sentient races very difficult, with more areas frozen than ever before, and the citizens of Tamriel slowly starving as their crops and livestock die. Parts of the population would very likely start fighting over rapidly dwindling supplies of food, and multiple conflicts would break out, causing widespread turmoil, halting trade to many areas, causing more shortages of certain materials, and so on. Now, some people would definitely still survive using magical healing, special potions, and eating stored foods, such as dried meats. Many kingdoms and cities may also have very large stores of grain hidden away, but these two can't last forever. That said, it's not like all food on Tamriel perishes straight away, and you'd have people creatively finding sources of nourishment to survive. One thing I thought of was that some algae and mushrooms and other unusual life forms would survive in cave ecosystems without light, but suddenly living in caves when it's freezing cold isn't going to be super feasible for most people. Again, it could be an idea used by very small groups of mages, perhaps, who can create heat using magic in an attempt to survive. It also gives me an idea which would allow vampires to feed more sustainably. Some mortal thralls could be kept alive with fires created by the vampires, legitimately or with magic, and these mortals could be sustained with a kind of mushroom farm, also sustained with heat and magic. The possibilities are endless if you sit down and brainstorm hard enough. The people of Tamriel would also become quite lethargic and sick due to the lack of sunlight, and eventually it would become quite common to have malnourished people freezing to death. Considering that it seems quite easy for vampires to hide, and quite hard for the civilizations of Tamriel to come up with any useful solution, let alone coordinate efforts amongst themselves during a tight time frame in such a damaging and stressful situation, I really think Tamriel could turn into a vampire world. Once Tamriel is in a very vulnerable state, then the vampires may become more active, gradually increasing their aggression with various clans feeding on vulnerable people all over Tamriel, growing the vampire population, which then allows them to convert more citizens to vampires and so on in an ongoing cycle. Like I mentioned earlier, there'd be some groups of cold and hungry people who would probably want to become vampires rather than die, which only helps grow the numbers. Furthermore, there'd be plenty of feeding opportunities for vampires early on in the downfall of the current Tamrielic societies, which allows them to retain more of a human-like appearance. Considering vampires have been known to operate using stealth and subterfuge, an early strategy could also be sending a vampire posing as a mortal into a city, who would then start infecting people on the inside while keeping their identity hidden. Send a few human-looking vampires to infiltrate each city, and you've got a powerful recipe for a whirlwind of chaos. Once the races of Tamriel have been weakened, anyone outside of the walled city still standing would be hunted down by packs of these superhuman-like beings, and there's probably other threats which would grow more powerful in a world of constant night. For example, the Falmor of Skyrim's underground cavern systems are suspected by many to want to invade the surface, and these cave dwellers would have a much better time doing so in a world shrouded in darkness. So that pretty much covers why I think that Tamriel as we know it would go down the drain pretty quickly if the sun was blocked out permanently. Vampires would be smart enough to bide their time, and then as civilization falls apart due to a lack of sunlight and food, they could slowly and methodically seize control by spreading their infection everywhere, culminating in a very cold, lifeless vampire world. But then what? Well, interestingly enough, I think even if Harkin fulfilled the prophecy and he was smart enough to hide to avoid any kind of extermination, he wouldn't necessarily come out with an amazing situation. But why is this? Well, consider that Harkin wants to fulfill the prophecy for power. Harkin has always been power hungry, originally sacrificing a thousand innocent lives for Molag Bao to turn himself and his family into pure-blooded vampires. Plus, he's even willing to sacrifice his own daughter to plunge Tamriel into darkness. He'll do whatever it takes to get power, but perhaps what he envisions wouldn't actually be worth it. Power is relative to the context you wield it in, and if Harkin lives in a world where everyone has vampire powers, then the significance of having such powers is reduced. Sure, he's a pure-blooded vampire lord with more power than most vampires who simply contract vampirism from the disease, but compared to the current version of Tamriel, Harkin would have less of a power gap between 
between him and the most common individual, as the common individual is now a vampire. Once a lion among sheep, Harkin would become a lion ruling over other lions, some of which could group together to get enough power to overthrow him. The world Harkin would be ruling wouldn't be too interesting either. It would end up as this big, frozen, rocky place without the luxuries previously afforded to society by a mortal working class. Sure, new hierarchies would be established among the vampires, but you've likely just wiped out almost all the useful workers in a functional society that was already there, a society you could easily benefit from while staying low profile. A lot of superficial luxuries like clothing, such as dyed capes and so on, are also produced from substances derived from life forms that need sunlight and a warmer temperature to be sustained. So all this cool stuff is now gone, and the difference in power between you and the average person is actually lessened. He might be higher in the ruling hierarchy of Tamriel, but there's not much left to rule, and you're going to have a lot of competition from other powerful vampires who are littered across the entire continent, even if you are the most powerful one on an individual level. Maybe he'd be happy, but personally, I don't think it's the best outcome to aspire towards, even for a power-hungry, tyrannical vampire lord. And that concludes this video theorizing the outcome of Harkin fulfilling the prophecy from the Dawnguard DLC, and why I think that outside of divine intervention or crazy plot magic which could be possible, Tamriel would be in big trouble if the sun was permanently blocked out. As I said in the introduction, it's a very subjective piece, and I'd love to read your personal thoughts regarding any complications Tamriel would face with no sunlight, and any issues Harkin would encounter if he ends up ruling a vampire kingdom on a now frozen and highly barren Tamriel. The whole place would be crawling with vampires who would likely end up forming new societies and fighting amongst themselves just like mortals do. As always, thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate how much support you've been giving the channel recently, and I would love for you to let me know what kind of content you want to see next. My name is Michael, social media links are in the description below, and I look forward to nerding out with you again very soon.